Hey, uh, and this news just emerging, a new deadly superbug is now in the United States. Dr. Nina Radcliffe is here with the details. We're talking about the Zika virus. We heard about it. We've seen the devastation, uh, and, and particularly in, in Brazil and other places. It's here? The Zika virus? Yeah. Yeah, the Zika virus has been here. There's over 500 cases that are affecting people. I thought it was like in Puerto Rico, but it's on mainland America. Right. It, it, the outbreak is in Latin America at this time. It's in um, Puerto Rico as well. But in the U.S. it is here. Most of them are travel related and they're being transmitted sexually. But the Centers for Disease Control, they've really gotten ahead of this. They have issued guidelines that we need to be watching and being um, and, um, aware of. But here's the problem, though. Uh, I, I know in Washington, D.C., they're talking about raising a lot of money. I've heard anywhere from one to two billion dollars. What would that be used for? Because on one hand, you're telling me the CDC is ahead of the uh, game, but by the same token, it feels like emergency in D.C. I mean, should we be really erring, to, uh, you know, being so cautious? Should we, should we be thinking about maybe spending a lot of money on this thing? When it comes to disease control and prevention, money is important. We need to get ahead of this type of thing. This does not come for free. We need to be able to create vaccines. We need to be able to understand how exactly Zika is affecting our ch the children, the unborn fetuses. There's a lot that needs to be known, and we are not going to be able to get there with that capital investment. The mosquito that breeds that, the breed of mosquito that carries this, uh, from what I've read, and of course a lot of this is ongoing, it's evolving before our very eyes, starts to come up to the northern states as it gets warmer and warmer, maybe perhaps even infecting different species or varieties of mosquitoes. I mean, it sounds like it could be a, an absolute nightmare. Well, when it first started hitting, it was in the winter times. We weren't seeing the problem with mosquitoes, but we're going to see it increasing. And, and that's why we need to get ahead of this. We need to understand how exactly this works, how it's affecting. We need to find vaccines for this. And we need to follow the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention Guidelines. My daughter-in-law is pregnant, and she's afraid to go out. And she's going to be more afraid as it gets it's the summertime. I mean, you're a doctor. You tell women in, in New York City in July that it's okay to walk around with it's pregnant ab women? Yeah, the risk for women is low in the country at this time, but we always want to take precautions. We want to protect against mosquitoes with deep repellent. We want to wear protective clothing. We want to make sure that if there are bodies of water that we get rid of, we want to do our part to make sure we protect ourselves. Earlier I spoke with uh, Ashley Webster. Uh, apparently there's a new government study out saying that, yeah, cell phones can cause cancer. Certainly they can cause cancer in rats. Uh, now, admittedly, with high doses. Uh, this is something that's sort of folklore, if you will, but people sort of always kind of felt like, how can there be this much radiation coming out of my thing into my brain and not ultimately harm me? Well, as a doctor, I love the fact that we're talking about this and we're looking at this. Cell phone uses, billions of people use cell phones, and radiation is a concern for the cause of cancer, but we do not know at this time. And although the fact that cell phone usage has increased, the risk of brain cancer cases have actually decreased. We do not know. It's going to take several more definitive studies, but we need to keep watching and keep a watchful eye. But So the, the anecdotal the, the, this thing is like, listen, we've used it heavily for 20 years, and we haven't seen a, a real outbreak, so don't be worried. I can't say don't be worried. We need to keep okay. a watchful eye. Because, you know, me and Ashley were saying that we remember the cigarette thing, right? And it's like, hey, smoke a cigarette before you run a relay race. Or my doctor smokes cigarettes, you know. So, at, But at what period do we say, okay, breathe a sigh of relief? Another five years maybe? You know, it's going to take decades because cancer doesn't happen overnight. It has to be exposure to radiation. We're using cell phones more. It's hardly a time we can walk across the street and not see somebody holding a cell phone. We're using it close to our brains, and there's always a concern when it comes to our safety. Our kids are using it. So, you know, what I'm saying is if you have a cell phone, try to keep it away from your ear. Don't sleep with it underneath your bed and use it hands free as often as possible. Yeah. Yeah, I know people who do use it more than those rats who are exposed nine hours a day. Right. And rats aren't <laughs> humans. And not all humans aren't rats. So. All right. I'll try to remember that. Yeah. Nina, thanks a lot. Thank have a great you. weekend. <laughs>